NBA players are generally super professional both on and off the court, but even pro athletes can let their emotions get the better of them. Because of this, the NBA hands out millions of dollars in fines every year, and some of them are stranger than you'd expect. These are nine of the weirdest fines in NBA history. Michael Jordan's 45 costs him $25,000. You'd think that an NBA player would have the freedom to choose his jersey number without any consequence. Well, believe it or not, you would be wrong. Pop quiz, what was Michael Jordan's jersey number when he played in the NBA? Easy question, right? We all know it was number 23, or was it? There was a brief time when Jordan wasn't rocking 23 and that choice ultimately cost him a lot of money. After his retirement, excuse me, his first retirement, Jordan returned to the NBA in March of 1995. For more than a year, fans had only been able to see MJ play baseball for the AA Birmingham Barons. During that time, Jordan wore the number 45, a nod to his high school days. When he decided to come back to the NBA, Jordan donned 45 again when playing for the Chicago Bulls. And after his return team resulted in a loss, Nick Anderson of the Orlando Magic said, number 45 doesn't explode like number 23 used to. Maybe that got under Jordan's skin because he soon switched back to his number 23 jersey. Maybe for good luck or to get some of his old juju back. Whatever his reason, the league required notification whenever a player changed jersey numbers. Since they didn't get it, they fined the Bulls $25,000. Eventually, they would wind up paying $100,000 because of multiple infractions. Of course, in the end, Jordan got the last laugh, as well as three more championships. He might be the greatest basketball player of all time, but even MJ wasn't able to avoid a truly stupid NBA fine. Celebrate good times? NBA players are entitled to celebrate when they score a great shot or help their team win, right? Well, not so fast. The NBA has actually cracked down on a few athletes who've been too joyful. Even the biggest names in the game have been subject to these fines. Case in point, LeBron James. Back in 2021, James was feeling himself. Literally, after scoring a huge bucket against the Indiana Pacers, LeBron was having another banner night, scoring 39 points and leading LA to a 124-116 win. So what did he do after a clean three-pointer? He danced down the court, gripping his, well, let's just say his MVP trophies. It was a little crude, sure, but the NBA thought it was too much. They hit him with a $15,000 fine. Back in 2015, Gerald Green of the Miami Heat was on top of the world after scoring a crucial three-pointer over the Washington Wizards. After nailing his shot, Green made a gun-shooting gesture twice as the crowd went wild, but the loud cheers of the Heat fans couldn't drown out the $25,000 fine that was waiting for Green the next day. The NBA does not like any references to guns, and Green learned that the hard way. And what about Joel Embiid? The Philadelphia 76ers superstar was recently smacked with a massive $25,000 fine of his own after he performed a suck it celebration, like the type done by professional wrestlers. Embiid was a little over the top with his gesture, but $25,000? Really? That's even more over the top. See, it doesn't matter how successful you are. If you do something the league doesn't like, they're gonna take aim at your pocketbook and they don't care how silly it looks. LeBron kicks the bottle. During his more than 20 years in the league, LeBron James has almost always had a good attitude and hasn't gotten into too many scuffles or controversies. He usually minds his manners and plays it straight, but during a tough game against the Minnesota Timberwolves in 2010, James got himself into hot water. Upset about not getting a foul call during a drive to the basket, LeBron was given a technical foul after complaining with a referee. James was furious and so coach Mike Brown pulled him from the game. That didn't cool him down and he shockingly kicked the water bottle as he approached the bench which sprayed multiple fans who were sitting right behind it. Of course, sending anything into the crowd is against NBA rules, so James was slapped with a $25,000 fine. $25,000 for getting a few people a little wet? Sounds a little drastic, doesn't it? Still, LeBron should have known better, especially because he had incurred another $25,000 fine just a season before for not speaking with the media after losing in the Eastern Conference Finals. Surely, he wasn't a bit surprised when he was hit with a fine after this water bottle incident. It may have been a dumb fine, but in the grand scheme of things, it was just a minor moment in an illustrious career. Ejected for passing? Look, it's not easy being an NBA ref. No matter what you do, someone is going to hate you. But sometimes they don't make it easy on themselves with some serious, bizarre, and quite frankly, dumb calls. Back in February of 2021, JJ Redick of the New Orleans Pelicans got ejected from a game for passing the ball to a ref. Yeah, that's right. 
To be fair, Redick and the refs had been having a back and forth all night long, but when Redick tossed the ball to a ref after a foul was called, he heard the whistle and received his second technical foul of the night. The ref thought he was being dramatic with his pass and that's why he received the tee. Looking back on it now, it's a crazy call. Yeah, maybe Redick was upset about the game, but this pass was not some sort of crazy move. As he walked back to the locker room, he shook his head in confusion, and so did a lot of other people. Remember, NBA players are fined $2,000 for a technical foul and $4,000 for an ejection. That means that a simple pass from Redick cost him thousands of bucks. What was he supposed to do? Not give the ref the ball? The league doesn't like when refs feel threatened in any sort of way, which totally makes sense. But a player being fined for simply tossing the ball at a game official? Looks pretty dumb. Mark Cuban runs his mouth. Many NBA owners run things behind the scenes and stay out of the public eye. Not Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban. He can be spotted courtside during nearly every game and loves to be very hands-on with day-to-day -day operations. In many ways, he's kind of like an extra coach and calls the shots, for better or worse. The 2017-18 season wasn't a good one for the Mavs. They ended the season with a 24-58 record, but it could have been better if not for the advice of Cuban. While speaking to Julius Irving on a podcast, Cuban confirmed that he told the team to lose on purpose toward the end of the season. He made it clear. Look, losing is our best option, Cuban said, telling the team it would boost their chances in the upcoming draft. Maybe it was the right move strategically, but it definitely cost Cuban. He was hit with a huge $600,000 fine for telling his team to lose. The NBA is definitely against coaching any squad to purposely lose games, and they wanted to make this one sting. It probably did, but in the end, it was totally worth it. Because of their lacking record, the Mavericks went on to score a high draft pick and walked away with Luka Doncic just a few moments later. He's well worth the $600,000 fine. The $600,000 fine may be considered foolish by many people, but Cuban got the last laugh in the end because his comments and the fine that came with it led to his team landing a generational talent who's now an NBA superstar. Delonte Wet Willie West even the best paid, most successful NBA stars can sometimes act childish. Back in 2012, Delonte West was playing for the Dallas Mavericks and showed one of the most bizarre ways to get a technical foul. In the second quarter of a game against the Utah Jazz, West got tangled up with Gordon Hayward. Things were obviously heated between the two and as Hayward walked away, West did something super odd. He put his finger in Gordon's ear. It was a bit like a wet willy that you saw as a child but dry. No matter what you want to call it, it was most definitely weird. And against the rules, because of the bizarre move, West was slapped with a $25,000 fine. It's not the fine that was ridiculous here, it was West's actions. Some people thought that West would appeal the fine because that's a pretty big chunk of change for a supporting player like him who wasn't pulling in the biggest salary in the world, but instead he let it stand and played it nice for a long time after that. Yeah, Delonte should have kept his hands to himself, but can we all agree that being charged $25,000 for something so simple is really pretty stupid? Dress Code Deviations when David Stern became commissioner of the NBA in the 1990s, he had his mind set on one thing, changing the length of the shorts that players wore. Sure, there were more important issues to tackle, but Stern really wanted to do away with what he considered hip-hop culture. In the early to mid-2000s, he had the NBA dress code changed so that shorts wouldn't go beyond the knees. There were other things the league changed too. No chains, no headphones, even no sunglasses inside the building. Stern was dead serious about totally changing the NBA. In fact, he even had a committee hired to solely spot uniform violations, the league was cracking down big time. This put the spotlight on some players a lot more than others. Allen Iverson, Kyle Korver, Kevin Ollie, and 13 others would end up being fined $130,000 for wearing shorts that were deemed too long by Stern and his legion of fashion police. On top of that, the players' teams were all fined an additional $50,000 per violation. The message was received loud and clear by players, who eventually started hiking up their shorts. These days, you don't see NBA players dressed like that anymore. Stern had a job to do, of course, but didn't he have something better to do than making sure NBA players weren't wearing long shorts? Jeff Van Gundy's War of Words Today, Jeff Van Gundy is paid handsomely for his comments about the NBA, but nearly two decades ago, he was paying handsomely because of them. Back in 2005, Van Gundy was the coach of the Houston Rockets, home to basketball phenomenon Yao Ming, and when Van Gundy shared his opinion about how officials were ruling against Ming, he experienced a huge backlash from the league. Van Gundy publicly said that referees had it out for Ming and were actively targeting the iconic center in the postseason. He even went as far as to say that Mark Cuban was to blame. He claimed that 
that Cuban complained about the way that Ming was being overlooked and given a pass and demanded that refs change their approach. That's quite the claim. NBA Commissioner David Stern was upset, to put it gently. If he's going to say things like that, he's not going to continue in this league, Stern said. Ouch. Van Gundy was speaking his mind, so $100,000 seems pretty crazy, but it didn't phase him at all. He laughed off the fine and Yao Ming himself said that he'd pay for half of it. At the time, that was the largest fine ever for an NBA coach and it proved that if anyone accused referees of actively targeting or going easy on a player, they were going to strike back in a big way. It was a big moment at that time, but we don't know if Van Gundy ever ended up paying or if Yao Ming split the bill with him. If you speak your mind and upset the NBA, you're going to be hit with a dumb fine. Jeff Van Gundy learned that the hard way. JR Smith's Shoe Show JR Smith is a talented basketball player, but there's no denying that he's kind of a weird dude. Throughout his NBA career, he definitely did a few things that were just downright odd. For example, back in 2014, JR Smith was fined $50,000 by the NBA for recurring instances of unsportsmanlike conduct. That sounds pretty bad, so what exactly did he do? Did he punch someone? Trip them? Yell at someone in the crowd? Nope, he untied a player's shoelaces. During a game against the Dallas Mavericks, Smith was spotted untying the shoelaces lace of Maverick star Sean Marion. The NBA wasn't happy with his actions and warned him to not do it again. So what did Smith do? Just days later, Smith attempted to untie the shoelace of Pistons forward Greg Monroe. And just like that, Smith was hit with a $50,000 penalty. He would later apologize after a bunch of media attention, as well as a condemnation from his coach, Mike Woodson. Oddly enough, he admitted that he had been untying shoes all of his career and claimed that he'd been doing it for a while. No one knows if Smith was trying to intimidate his opponents or just entertain himself, but this remains one of the most bizarre and strangest fines in the history of the league. NBA fines are a necessary part of the game, but sometimes they're confusing, dramatic, and really just plain stupid.